Hello everyone, it's Orsi Parkani from Oslo Blockchain Cluster. Today we are very lucky, this is a very exciting episode of the Oslo Blockchain Cluster uh, video channel. We are talking with Srini, who is studying at the University of Southeastern Norway, USN, and he's writing a research paper on adaptation of blockchain technology for Norwegian oil and gas company, companies. Thank you so much, uh, Srini, for being with us today and sharing uh, some findings that you have with your research. Uh, uh, hi, Osha. Thank you so much for having me. It is my honor to be here. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's get started. Can you just introduce uh, yourself and just give us a bit of a background on your research? Uh, yeah, I, I finished my bachelor's in uh, naval architecture. Uh, then I worked in shipyards for uh, seven years as a naval architect. And then uh, now I am uh, currently studying uh, master's in maritime management. Uh, now I am uh, almost done, except the thesis. So the thesis topic is, uh, you know, the adaptation of uh, blockchain technology in Norwegian oil and gas companies. So that's what I am doing research on now. Fantastic. That is very exciting. How did you become interested in this field? Uh, the uh, blockchain is, you know, literally the future. It is going to be the future at least. Uh, so I thought, uh, and also I, I realized that uh, not many research papers have been uh, written on this. Uh, I was uh, curious to know why, and then I couldn't find so many articles. So I thought uh, maybe I could uh, write this. And also I found an interesting article uh, written by Harvard Business Review, and they have written this. But uh, me and the supervisor uh, came up with an idea. We thought uh, we could actually make it into a practical use. And uh, it would be very interesting to see what the results say. Great. Uh, so what have you been founding so far? Or what uh, exciting things that you came across with uh, doing your uh, literature review and the background on yeah, yeah. blockchain? And uh, why oil and uh, gas companies? I'm also uh, curious uh, to hear that. Then I, I could do for uh, every other sectors as well, like uh, banking sector or uh, you know accounting, anything I could do. But uh, oil and gas would be very relevant for me because I'm a maritime student. And also in Norway, it's very, it's, it would be great to have results as far as oil and gas companies concerned because uh, we have uh, this technology here implemented uh, compared to other countries, you know, so it would be better to do that here more than uh, any other countries. Are we in a way behind in Norway in adaptation of blockchain technology in this field? Uh, uh, maritime field, we are always you know, little behind in every industry, every department, but uh, in blockchain, the same goes the story. But some companies are uh, really picking up now. So that's what uh, I am very you know, interested to find. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, have you had any findings so far? How, how long you've been uh, um, doing this research project? Uh, I've been doing this uh, for almost four months. Okay. And then um, I have uh, uh, made people do survey, like uh, four people or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, the results have been very you know, mixed so far. But uh, the more I get, the ideal would be for me to know what exactly are they saying because it's all mixed now. Everyone says differently. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. okay. Well, we will do a shout out for you at the end of this video to uh, see if uh, in our circles and network, maybe there are companies and, and people who are interested to take part in your research and uh, yeah. answer your questionnaire question. Uh, that uh, you have. But uh, before that, I'd really like to talk a bit more about this research. So what is the focus of it and uh, what have you been funding so far? Yeah, uh, so, uh, blockchain. Everyone says that it is going to revolutionize the industry, you know, any other industry, it is going to rule the world. And uh, that's what everyone says. Everyone says, every expert say that uh, why it should happen. They say all the reasons, you know, safe and secure, transparency, trust, building everything. But uh, not many says how it should happen and when it will be happening, you know. So that's what uh, my research is about. 
uh, I have, a, uh, as per the Harvard Business Review, I have four alternatives in blockchain technology. Uh, you can say there are four transformation phases or four stages or four phases, uh, whatever you want to call it. So I am going to find out out of these four stages, which is the best stage people prefer. You know, people who work in uh, oil and gas companies prefer. Is it the four stages for adoption? Yeah, uh, these are the four adoption stages, which would be single use, localization, substitution, and transformation. So what, oh. I, have, what I have uh, made is, how am I going to find these out of these four, which is the best one? I have established, uh, based on so many literatures, I have established uh, five, cri five major criteria. So the criteria would be pressures, drivers, organizational barriers, uh, supply chain barriers, and the technological barriers. So basically, it is based on criteria such as uh, motivators and barriers. So under each criteria, I have three sub-criteria. So that would be 15 sub-criteria in total. So based on 15 sub-criteria, with respect to all four alternative, like I said before, I will find which one would be the ideal according to the experts. It has covered every uh, possible criteria. So it will be the ideal result, I believe. Hmm. So what are you get, uh, trying to get out of it? What do you think would be the outcome for, for Norway if you, if you, uh, when you complete this research and the learnings from that? Uh, Norway? Uh, yeah, I can uh, I can actually give you a little uh, short story which really happened actually. Uh, in uh, 2014, uh, you know, MIT, there's a thing called the MIT Bitcoin Club and they have, uh, they issued 100 US dollar in Bitcoin currency to 5,000 uh, MIT undergraduates. Uh, just an experiment, that was an experiment, even though the money was real, you know, but uh, what those uh, students, they, it was very interesting actually. They, 30% of the students, uh, they didn't even enroll for the free money. And 20% uh, of the students, uh, they actually, uh, you know, exchange into actual currency. Nobody knew the real value of the Bitcoin back then. So, I mean, they are supposed to be smart, right? I mean, even those people couldn't uh, grasp the uh, magnitude of the Bitcoin, then uh, I thought maybe, uh, then of course, then how would uh, people who work in, uh, uh, you know, oil and gas companies, they could, uh, I mean, they're always busy with their work. Uh, they cannot uh, think of uh, so much implementation right away. I mean, they ha it has to be smooth, right? So uh, when students couldn't even get the money, then uh, people who work in organization, how could they think of uh, further improvisation, right? So, so in Norway, what is going to happen in the next five years? Uh, this research apply applicable for next five years because uh, we don't want to go, you know, too far. Uh, I was thinking of ten years because then if I go ten years, then it would be a long stretch because uh, there are a lot of uncertainties involved. Nobody knows what's going to happen in the long run. But for the next five years, we can be a bit realistic. So, so as far as uh, I have heard and uh, people tell me that uh, now in Norway, we are currently in uh, stage one, between stage one and stage two. If it were up to me, I would, uh, I would want to be in the fourth stage, which is like the most advanced stage. But then again, it's not up to me. <laughs> so do you mean by that, that in Norway we are in stage one, stage two, that people are aware of the benefits of the technology and there's a more awareness, but the adaptation is not as widespread? Yeah, it is, uh, it is uh, very complicated because a lot of uh, legislations involved and uh, um, it's not about just, uh, you know, if you take the uh, finance, finance sector, then uh, it is kind of easy because uh, it it's like a small network of firms as far as the financial sector is concerned, because you don't have too much parties involved in the as involved in the supply chain, right? Because if you take the offshore industry, it has a lot of equipment supplier and distributor. There are so many people. Everyone has to be on the same page 
for this blockchain to be implemented. That's why the complication is here. Under the 15 sub-criterias, I have classified into all the sub-criterias, like uh, um, if you take the technological barriers, under the technological barriers, I have considered uh, immaturity of the technology and uh, security concerns. And if you take the uh, pressure part, under the pressure, I have considered uh, customer pressure, market pressure, and uh, all these sub criterias have been uh, considered. So I don't think uh, I have missed anything. So it would cover everything. Thank you so much. That, that sounds amazing. At Oslo Blockchain Cluster, we are all about education and collaboration. So we would really like to support this uh, research and also very curious to find out you know, what you come up with at the end of the, um, the research. So how can we support you? What is that that you would need in order for you to get a lot more data to work with? Uh, uh, if, if, uh, if it is possible for me to get any uh, literature, you know, where I, which I couldn't find anywhere else, that would be great. If uh, people think uh, they have something which I don't, which I cannot be having, that would be great for my literature so that I would add uh, more input to my uh, thesis. And then as far as the survey is concerned, uh, uh, it takes about, it is based on a multi-criteria decision-making method. It is like one of the most uh, most complicated uh, survey. Uh, I have to be uh, honest, but, uh, but, but by having said that, it would yield the most uh, ideal result because it's designed that way, that the uh, survey design is that way, that result design. So how long does it take to fill out the survey? It takes about 40 to 45 minutes. Okay, and uh, and you're aiming for companies within the oil and gas sector in Norway. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. my, my ideal respondents would be supply chain uh, experts and then uh, digital experts, um, information technology, accounting, finance, operations, and then uh, people who are working in oil and gas companies, that would be very great. Uh, if they come forward and they could uh, do the survey. Uh, but then again, even if they have an idea so much about maritime industry and blockchain as well, they don't have to be especially working in oil and gas industries, they can still do the survey. Thank you, that is fantastic. So this is our shout out for everyone who is within that space. You can reach out to us at Oslo Blockchain Cluster on our social media channels or via email and at uh, info at osloblockchaincluster.no and we can get you in touch with Chiri. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you and good luck with your research and we are very, very curious and excited to hear in a couple of months.